The thing I love most about the business world, how gosh darn simple everything is. Want to sell more products? Run ads. Want a bigger audience? Post more. Ah, business is great. People are terrific. Life is wonderful. Yeah, if things were that easy, none of us marketers would have jobs. The truth is that we all need a little help sometimes. And finding a mentor to help you leap from where you are to where you want to be can be just the ticket. But what makes a great mentor? And how does a motivated marketer go about finding one? On this week's episode of Marketing is Broken, the founder of GrowthMentor.com, Fodi Panagio Takopoulos, shares his tips for a mentorship match made in heaven. I mean heaven. Menopause, mental, mentos, m mentor. Ah, here it is. Mentor, a wise and trusted counselor or teacher. You can find help with virtually everything these days, from how to grow your business to how to shop for groceries. Yes, Joanne, that's a great question. What is the business objective of the groceries? Adding to the already muddled mess of mentorships, some mentorship arrangements are paid while some aren't. Some mentorships are official and some aren't. If you choose the right mentor, they can help you fast track promotions, negotiate salary or rate increases, scale your business, help you level up your skills and services, and so much more. And though it's often presented as a young person's prerogative, mentorship can be an incredibly rewarding relationship at any stage of your career. That all sounds pretty good, right? The problem is that if you choose the wrong mentor, you could easily end up shelling out five figures for a coach who turns out to be just as clueless as you. Hey, wait a second, that sounds familiar. Here with us to show you how to get started finding a mentor is Fodi Panagio Takopoulos, founder of growthmentor.com. I guess that makes him a meta mentor. What kind of advantages do people with mentors have over people that don't have mentors? Yeah, great question. So I, I, I like to think that it's the ultimate growth hack uh, because you can leverage the experiences and the insights of other people who have a lot more experience than you, right? So, I mean, what, one of the things that I tell people is that you want to reduce your unknown unknowns as much as possible. Like there's things that you don't know that you don't even know exist, right? And those are generally the things that are going to come and blindside you and bite you in the butt uh, and cause a lot of problems for you uh, down the line. Uh, so, I mean, that's generally, uh, the, the biggest benefit that you can reduce the big time, the amount of risk, right? So if you're working on a, on a large uh, project or a website redesign or, a, you know, product repositioning, having a chat with somebody who's done that, been there before can uh, really give you a lot of new perspective from a different uh, angle. Uh, and it's a lot faster to learn than by uh, reading blog posts and, you know, watching courses because it's active learning as well, right? You jump into the thing, do it. If you get stuck, you have somebody that you can talk to and say, hey, you know, what would you do in this situation? Right? And I find that to be kind of one of the best ways to learn because you're not just consuming content. You're actively trying to get through your, your bottlenecks, uh, leveraging yeah. people's insights. Yeah, and, that sounds that sounds yeah. great. I mean, it's like, you know, trying to install a WordPress site and, you know, instead of trying to read through a, a manual, being able to tap somebody on the shoulder and be like, I'm stuck here. So, um, yeah. Sounds fantastic. So what do mentors get out of it? So if you had to estimate like what percentage of these relationships are, you know, paid, the mentor is getting paid or maybe B, they're some sort of an apprenticeship arrangement where maybe the mentee is doing some work for the mentor or, or how many of these are just straight up free and people are doing it out of the, the goodness of their heart. I mean, mentorship in the wild is generally free. I, I think 99% of the mentorship relationships out there are, are, are altruism based. Um, but, uh, you know, then there's third platforms where you can pay for it. But I, I generally do think that mentorship has this connotation of, of giving first, giving back and doing things because it, it makes you feel good. Right. So one of the, the biggest motivators for mentors is that it just genuinely makes you feel good when, when you help someone, right? Like when was the last time you really gave some advice and it helps change someone's life? Like, didn't that make you feel good inside? So like, these are intrinsic reward systems that mentorship is generally tapping. And those are much more powerful than extrinsic reward systems, just like, you know, the typical up $50 an hour for my time. Um, and, and it gives the best effect. So another big re, uh, benefit for mentors is they uh, like learned pain points of other uh, marketers and founders out there. Like what are you, what are other people suffering? With? What are, you know, how can I help uh, via my own businesses that I'm running or my services that I'm offering? So, you know, it goes both ways, not to mention 
that it's a really a very good way to learn is to teach other people. It's like the most effective way like if, you, if you want to brush up on your skills, because a lot of us that have been doing marketing for a long time, like there's certain elements that we haven't touched upon in years. And then somebody comes and asks for some assistance and, you know, we preach them and it's like, well, I'm actually not even doing this myself anymore. So it kind of reminds you like, Hey, you know, maybe you got to, after this call, go back and, and restructure your drip campaign for example. Right. Yeah. Clean so like there's a, there's a lot of uh, benefit for, for, for the mentee side, mentor side as well. Yeah, that's great. So how do you know that you're in a good mentor mentee relationship? And first of all, like how do you even get into one? Yeah. So the, the, ease, the free way to get into a mentor mentee relationship is just to do outreach and uh, maybe contact people in your network and say, Hey, you know, I, would love to, to have you as my mentor, but that generally doesn't really work because successful people are, are quite busy. So one way to hack that is by paying it forward and doing something really nice for someone or helping someone out or you know, just generally getting on, on, on the good side of whoever it is that you want to be mentored by. Uh, I mean, obviously like the easiest way would be to sign up to a platform uh, online and, and, and book a mentor on demand. But uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of, knowing uh, if you're in a good mentor mentee relationship, uh, probably the biggest telltale sign is that the mentor is asking a lot of questions uh, and isn't really like pushing his, her agenda down your throat because being a mentor takes a, like there's a lot of responsibility because you're speaking to somebody who's probably in a fragile, could be in a fragile state, right? They're coming to very impressionable. Yes. And it's like, you know, you have to treat that with respect uh, and understand that, yes, you do have to give a little bit of tough love sometimes. Like if you notice that your mentee is clearly going down the wrong path, but you have to do it as well with that sort of like, you have to have that emotional intelligence to be like, well, you know, I can't like completely destroy them, uh, their ego right now because they're, they're pouring it out to me. But generally like Socratic questioning is really important. So like asking the question and then like asking again, keeping going down that, that, that rabbit hole of questioning and inquisitiveness because the ultimate goal with mentorship is getting the mentee to come to their own conclusions by just talking and answering the questions themselves. And at some point, like it's going to hit and be like, Oh yeah, actually I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that. Or like, you know, that's the most powerful thing. If you can get your, your, your mentee to actually like figure out the solution on themselves. So, um, because talking out loud does trigger part of your brain. Um, you know, when you, when you verbalize things, like you're using your engaged part of the brain that's for the diaphragm, the vocal cords, the mouth. So it engages more parts of your brain. So it really helps with problem solving as well, which yeah. is another like really hidden advantage. Like that's why developers, they talk to their rubber ducks called rubber duck debugging. Uh, and they'll just debug their code line by line until, you know, at some point that solution is going to come to them. It's like, Oh, you know, so whether you have a rubber duck or a real life mentor, it, it de if def the process works, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was fantastic advice. Fodi Panagio Takopoulos, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. That's it for today. Personally, after that talk, I feel super mented. No, wait, extra mented. No, that doesn't sound right either. Anyway, sound off in the comments and let me know whether your mentorship experience was fantastic or whether it wasn't meant to be. Hey, it's Josh from Brandish Insights. Thank you for watching Marketing is Broken. If you like this week's episode, please click below to subscribe or check out other episodes. And if your company could use more insights around your branding efforts, check out brandishinsights.com.